All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Athenian Stranger tutorial video where today we are going to work through the Unit 1 Cumulative Exam Review for Geometry. First up, what is the proper notation for line ST? The notation for a line would be a little line symbol like this with the arrowheads, and then you just put the letters underneath it. So that would be choice A, line ST. Number two, ask about a segment. When two points E and L identify a segment distance, how would we notate that? Well, that's just with a, you know, you're, you're trying to, we want to call it a line, but it's not a line, it's a segment because it doesn't have the arrowheads. So it's just like a line with no arrowheads and then E, L underneath. And that's for my Stranger Things fans right there, L. Number three, oh, I should circle this one. Number three, when approximating the square root of 62 by hand using the division method, what is the value of the number we subtract from 100 times the first remainder? Okay. Um, here is what we're going to do. We're going to follow the division method and see what we get. All right. And pay attention to what it's asking us for. The value of the number we subtract from 100 times the remainder. So we just follow the division method and see where it brings us. And we'll, we'll see the answer as we do it. So this is the square root of 62. And remember, in the division method, I really just take 62 and put a division bar right here. And now I think... What square, okay, can I can I think of that's smaller than 62? So that's like 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64. So 8 is too big, 7 is good. So I'll put 7 here and 7 here. 7 times 7 is 49. And I will subtract. And... This is 5 and this is 12. I get 13. And I'll now bring down, I'll put a decimal place right here and then bring down two zeros. Two zeros to make 1300. Remember, we then put less than or equal to line, multiply line. Now, double 7. Don't forget to double 7. That'll be 100 and. 40 something and the number we goes here has to be the same number that goes here so we have to test values okay so let's try because 140 put it this way it can't be 10 right because we can't put a, a 10 here that's two digits but even if we could 14 times 10 is 1400 so it's got to be less than that Let's try 149 times 9. And let's see if this will work. And you do have to test values. So 149 times 9, that's 81, 8. Uh, 4 times 9 is 36, plus 8. What is that, 44? Okay, and now a 1 times 9 is 9, plus 4 is 1341. Oh, that's too big because it's got to be less than or equal to 1300. So it must be 8, 149 times, or 148 rather, times 8. 148 times 8. Let's try that, because first we tried 149 times 9. Now we'll try 148 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. Carry the 6. 4 times 8 is 32, plus 6 is 38. And now I have uh, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3, and that gives me 1, 1, 8, 4. Okay, so this must be 8, and this must be 8, and that means that my first decimal approximation is 8. Okay, and now we go ahead and do this. 148 times 8 was 1184, and so I put 1, 1, 8, 4 right here 
and I'll then subtract from 1300 if I wanted to continue the process of finding more and more decimal places. But for our purposes, we can stop because this is, if you look at the question, what is the value of the number we subtract from 100 times the first remainder? So the first remainder times 100 was 1300. We're subtracting 1184. And so 1184 is the answer. OK, what is the midpoint formula? Well, this right here is the distance formula, so that's not right. The midpoint formula is the average of the x's, comma, the average of the y's. Well, we don't find average through subtraction. OK, so it's not b. And over here, this is just the Pythagorean theorem kind of rewritten. Uh, that would be a squared plus b squared equals c squared, x squared plus y squared equals m squared. So it's not a, it's not b, and it's not d. x plus x over 2, there it is. So we've got an average of the x's and an average of the y's. It's c. Which of the following best describes the distance formula in word form? So here's the distance formula in word form. We take the absolute difference of, yeah, well, you have the difference of the x's squared plus the difference of the y's squared, and we take the square root of that. So it's the square root of the sum of the squared differences of the x and y values. So distance is equal to the square root of the sum of the squared differences of the x and y coordinates. That's close enough. So it's not the average. It's not equal to the longest side. It's not equal to the square root of the difference of the squares. Uh, the square root of the difference of the squares. See, right here we're missing that plus. So it should be the square root of the sum of the differences of the squares. So if we want to write the distance formula out, you can see. I'm going to take the square root of the sum of the squared differences of the x and y values. Like this. And it's just an application of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. It's a solution of the Pythagorean theorem for the hypotenuse. All right, so that would be A. Okay. Moving on. Here we go. We're going to do segment addition postulate to solve for X. And we're asked to solve for X here. So remember, the segment addition postulate says that R plus S, or RS plus ST is equal to RT. Okay, so in this case, I've got 4 plus 2x minus 10 equals x plus 4. Just solving for x, guys. I'll subtract x from both sides. And over here, I get 0, and over here, I get 1x, or just x and I'll rewrite 4 minus 10 equals sorry I skipped the x term it is early 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 in the morning 4 plus x minus 10 on the left equals 4 okay so now I'm just going to continue to solve for x let me subtract out 4 on both sides. They both go to 0. So now I have x minus 10 equals 0. I need to add 10 to both sides and get x equals 10. Okay, so that's x. Number 7, same question. So we'll just write it all out. That means 4x minus 1. So PQ plus QR equals PR. 4x minus 1 plus 3x 
minus 3 equals 17. Okay, so you know, I'll work this one a little bit differently. On the left side, I can combine like terms. So 4x plus 3x is 7x. And negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. So 7x minus 4 equals 17. Now I can add 4 to both sides. On the left, it goes to 0. Now I've got 7x left. 17 plus 4, that's 21. So now I have 7x equals 21. And I'll divide both sides by 7. Cancel, cancel on the left, and I have x equals to 21 sevenths, which is just 3. Okay, so the next two questions are, we start them by doing what we just did, but then we plug that x value back in. So here I've got, I want to find uv, this little distance right here. First, I'm just going to solve for x. 8 plus 2x minus 22. equals x minus 2 because tu plus uv equals tv okay so solving for x here we can uh, we can get rid of this x I'll subtract x on both sides and now I've got x and 0 so now I have 8 plus x minus 22 equals negative 2. I'll continue here. I'll add 22 to both sides. And 20, negative 22 plus 22 is 0. Negative 2 plus 22 is 20. All right, so now I have 8 plus x equals 20. Subtract 8 on both sides. Alright, so now I have 0 over here and 12 over here. So now x equals 12. Oops, couldn't see it. x equals 12, but I'm not done yet. I know x equals 12. I've got to plug it in to 2x minus 22. If you remember function notation from algebra, I'm really taking f of 12 equals 2. Instead of writing 2x minus 22, I'll put two open parentheses, close parentheses, minus 22, and then plug in that 12. Okay, follow order of operations. 2 times 12 is 24, minus 22. 24 minus 22 is 2, right? So I would have loved one of the answer choices to be 12, just to see if people would go and put the x value in, but it's just 2. Okay, number nine, find ij. That is this longer distance right here. First, we'll apply segment addition. ij plus jk equals ik, and that would be x minus 5 plus 1 equals 2x minus 16. All right, so minus 5 plus 1 is minus 4. We can simplify x minus 4 equals 2x minus 16. This time I'll solve for x on the right by subtracting x from both sides just to avoid negatives. And that's 0 and x. So now I have negative 4 on the left equals x minus 16. Add 16 to both sides. And on the right, I get 0. On the left, I get 12. So 12 equals x. But that's not what I want. I want to plug in 12 to find ij. So we'll say f of x equals x minus 5. And then we'll evaluate that function at 12. f of 12 equals 12 minus 5. 
Well, 12 minus 5 is equal to 7, right? So that's C. Number 10, find the midpoint of each line segment. First step here is to identify the coordinates. All right, so we'll call this A and B. And the coordinates for A are 1, 1. It's 1, 1. And the coordinates for B are 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3. All right, so the key here is to label your points. That's why I'm going to take a moment here and say A is 1, 1. And B is 1, negative 3. Take this step. It'll save you. Now I need to label the points x1, x2, y1, y2. So the midpoint formula, midpoint formula says I take the average of the x values, x1 plus x2 over 2, to get my midpoint x coordinate. And then for my midpoint y coordinate, take the average of the y values, y1 plus y2 over 2. It's all the midpoint formulas. Let's plug it in, right? So we'll plug it in down here. The midpoint will be equal to, okay, so this is the coordinates of the midpoint. x1 is 1. x2 is 1. So 1 plus 1 over 2 comma, and then y1 is 1, plus y2, and that's negative 3, so that's like plus negative 3, it's essentially subtraction, over 2. All right, let's simplify this. M, open parentheses, 2 over 2 is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So it's 1 comma negative 1. Number 11, identify the points. Here's A, here's B. This is negative 4, 2. And this is negative 2, comma, negative 2. Write it out over here where it's real clear. So A is going to be negative 4, comma, 2. And B will be negative 2, let me make sure I'm getting it right. Negative 2 comma negative 2. Yeah. All right, so plug into the midpoint formula. That'll be x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'll plug in negative 4 plus negative 2, right? So that would be like minus 2 over 2 comma. And then y1 plus y2 would be 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 over 2. You want to see this written out. Otherwise, I'm going to be concerned how you figured it out. So now m, open parentheses, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Comma, 2 minus 2 is 0. Anything where 0 is in the numerator, 0 divided by anything is just 0, so it's negative 3, comma, 0. Okay, so on to number 12. It's the same type of question, just more, more midpoint formula. So we'll call this A and this B. A looks like it's located at negative 3, comma, negative 4. And B looks like it's located at 2, comma, negative 2. So we'll say A is at negative 3, comma, negative 4. And B is at 2, comma, negative 2. Midpoint formula, okay, let's label these x1, y1, x2, y2. Midpoint formula says that the x-coordinate will be the average of the x's, negative 3 plus 2 over 2. 
and the average of the y's would be negative 4 plus negative 2 would be negative 4 minus 2 over 2. Work it out. M negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 over 2. That's negative 1 half. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Over 2 is negative 3. So negative 1 half comma negative 3. Okay. Um, number 13. I think you might not have been able to see all that. My paper was not moved correctly. No, whatever. There it is. Number 13. Here's A. Here's B. So what is this? This is negative 2, comma, 5. Negative 2, comma, 5. And B is 5, comma, 1. Right? So let's, let's write those out. This is, I don't know, put this here. A is negative 2, comma, 5. B is 5, comma, 1. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. Midpoint formula says that I'll take the average of the x's, and that'll be negative 2 plus 5 over 2, comma, the average of the y's, 5 plus 1 over 2, and let's just simplify that. The midpoint is that negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3 over 2. Positive 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. So this is 1 and 1 half. Comma. 5 plus 1 is 6 over 2 is 3. So 1 half comma 3. Or 1 and 1 half comma 3. Okay, so now we're asked to find the other endpoint of a line segment with the given endpoint and midpoint. Students were doing this visually when there was a graph. So I took the graph away. Because nobody was doing the math. You know, so that was, that was a problem. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to do the math. I'm not trying to torture you, but the point is not that you can just see it. Right? That's practical. In the real world, go ahead and do that. But the point is that you can calculate it. So I want you to calculate the other endpoint. Let's first write out the midpoint. The midpoint is the average of the x's, x1 plus x2 over 2. I want you to think about this formula a little bit. Comma, the average of the y's y1 plus y2 over 2. All right. And now let's plug in the information we have. We have the midpoint. Okay, so this is x sub m, and this is y sub m. We also have one endpoint. We'll call this x sub 1, y sub 1. I want to make something clear. This whole thing equals x sub m, right? This whole thing equals y sub m. So we could say x sub m is equal to this piece right here, x1 plus x2 over 2. And we could say y sub m is equal to y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in what I have. I have x sub m. That's negative 4. So now negative 4 equals. And I have x sub 1. That's negative 5. I need to find x sub 2. So plus x sub 2. And that's what we're going to be finding. Over 2. I also have y sub m, that's 10. 10 equals, I have y sub 1, that's negative 4. When I say sub 1, I'm saying subscript 1. Negative 4 and plus y2. 
or y sub 2 over 2. All right, so these are two separate little algebra problems you'll have to do. First step is to get rid of the 2 in the denominator. I'll multiply both sides by 2 in the numerator to get rid of this 2 on the right. So I cancel those out, and now I have 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 equals negative 5 plus x2. All right, so I just add out the 5, and I've got it. Negative 5 or plus 5 is 0. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. Therefore, negative 3 equals the x coordinate of the endpoint. All right, so I found that piece. Over here, I'll do, uh, I'll do the same thing. I'll multiply out the 2s. They cancel on the right. 2 times 10 is 20. Equals negative 4 plus y2. Add out the 4 on both sides. On the right, I've got 0, and then 20 plus 4 is 24. So 24 equals y2. So now I have my x and y coordinates. I have negative 3, comma, 24. All right, and that was the purpose. All this math was missing from the last test, and I needed y'all to show that. Okay, so... The next problem is to find the endpoint here. Again, it's the same thing. We're given x sub 1, y sub 1. And we're also given x sub m, y sub m. So let's plug it in. The midpoint formula says that I need the average of the x values, x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, the average of the y values, y1 plus y2 over 2. All right? But here's the deal. I don't have all the information I need. If I want to find, so let's write this. This is x sub m. This is y sub m. This is the x coordinate of the midpoint, the y coordinate of the midpoint. So let's write x sub m equals this. The average of the x values divided by 2. Okay, y sub m equals the average of the y values over 2. Now you can see the piece you're missing. Plug in what you have. So we have x sub m is 4 equals, we have x sub 1 is 6 plus x sub 2 over 2. There's a little math problem. And now y sub m is also 4 equals y sub 1 is 7 plus y2, which I don't know, over 2. Okay, so we'll multiply out the 2. It cancels on the right. 2 times 4 is 8 equals 6 plus x sub 2. Subtract 6 out on both sides. And I have 2 equals x sub 2. Over here, I'll do the same thing. Multiply out those 2s. They cancel on the right. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 equals 7 plus y sub 2. Now I'll subtract out 7 on both sides. And I get 1 equals y sub 2. So it's 2 comma 1. All right, that's how you do those. Here comes the triangle mid-segment theorem. Remember, what it means is these lines are parallel right here. It means that this distance is equal to one half of this distance. Or you could say this, this longer distance here is equal to two times this distance. So we'll do it the second way. I'll say x plus 18 equals 2 times... 13 plus x. Don't forget to put them in parentheses because you're going to need to distribute that 2. 
Now I have x plus 18 equals 26 plus 2x. I want to get the x's together, so I'll first subtract the x on both sides. x minus x is 0. 2x minus x is x. I now have 18 equals 26 plus x. Subtract out 26 on both sides. All right, so this would be negative 8 equals x. Let me make sure I did that right. Yep. Okay, so negative 8 equals x. Well, now we need to evaluate. What are they looking for? GH. They're looking for GH. That's this one. We need to construct a little uh, function here. f of x equals 13 plus x. So what is f of negative 8? That's equal to 13 plus negative 8. 13 minus 8. And 13 minus 8 is 5. Right? So it, it's 5. Okay, here's the same thing here. I'll do it the other way this time. I'll say 2x minus 8, that's the shorter side, is equal to 1 half this side, longer side, 2x plus 2. All right, so first we'll distribute the 1 half. So I'll rewrite 2x minus 8 equals 1 half times 2x is 2 over... 2x, which is just x. 1 half times 2 is again 2 over 2, that's 1, x plus 1. Okay, so I'll subtract the x on both sides. Now I've got x minus 8 equals 1. Add 8, and you get x equals 9. Now evaluate, what is it, 1? EF. Once EF, that's this little distance, we'll say F of 9 equals 2 times 9 minus 8. Well, that's equal to 2, time, uh, two times 9 is 18 minus 8, which is 10. Okay, so that's 10. All right, it wants us to find the distance between two points here. I'm not going to plot the coordinates right now, but if you needed to plot the coordinates, you would have to first turn these into decimal approximations. I mean, I'll just show how to do it for one of them. 7 fourths, just take 7 and divide by 4. 4 goes into 7 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. There's a remainder of 3 at a decimal point. Bring down a 0. 4 goes into 30 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Remainder of 2, okay? So bring down another 0. 4 goes into 25 times. All right, so that would be uh, 1.75, which is 1 and 3 quarters. And you get back to that improper fraction, 4 times 1 plus 3 is 7 fourths. Okay, so if you were going to use a decimal approximation, you would use 1.75 for 7 fourths. And you would do that for each of the values. And then you would plot them. Now why do I feel like I'm just going to go ahead and do it? So now 9 eighths. That's 9 eighths. That is equal to 1 and 1 eighth. Right? So do the math. That's 1.125. And then 2 thirds is just... 0.6 repeating, and 3 eighths, I think that's 0.375, I can't remember. So 3 divided by 8, we'll put a decimal place. 8 goes into 30 three times. 3 times 8 is 24. Yeah, it's going to be 0.375. So this is 0.375. All 
All right, so my coordinates now are A is going to be 1.75 comma 1.125 and B is going to be two-thirds which is 0.6 repeating if we're going to plot the points we're going to use decimals when we compute the distance formula we'll use the fractions three-eighths is 0.37 or is it 0.325 hang on a second six yeah it's 0 0.375 0 0.375 right so where do these where do these points lie 1.75 is right here and 1.125 would be like right there uh 1.125 rather would be like right there okay maybe like right there so this would be like point a and point B. Point B is that point six on the X. Where is that point six would be somewhere like right here. And then on the Y, it's point three seven five. Okay, so that's like point four, somewhere like right here. So everybody feel comfortable with that? So we want to find the distance between these two points. We want to find this distance here. Okay, so what does the distance formula tell us? Distance formula says that the distance is equal, see all these square roots, you're going to have to keep your values exact, is equal to the square root of the sum of the squared differences of the x and y values. So x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. All right, so let's plug in our values. This is the square root of the sum of the squared differences. See how I'm saying it? Write it like you say it. There, now you're just going to plug in values. You just need to know what x1, y1, x2, y2. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, so I'm going to plug 7 fourths in for x1. So that would live right here. I'll plug in 9 eighths for y1. 9 eighths. Two thirds for X two and three eighths for Y two. Okay, so we're going to have to simplify. I'm going to turn uh, two thirds and seven fourths into different fractions because I got two thirds here and seven fourths here. I've got to have common denominator to subtract. The lowest common denominator is 12, so I need to multiply 2 thirds by 4 over 4 and 7 fourths by 3 over 3. And that would give me 8 twelfths, and this would give me 21 twelfths. All right, so I'm just going to substitute these back in here equals square root of here we go. Let me rewrite this parameters here. Remember these squares, minus signs. All right, so now I'll plug back in 8 twelfths here and 21 twelfths here. And then here it's okay, 3 eighths and 9 eighths. And we're getting close. So now we're going to just do this again, simplify as we go. So now here I've got, you do have to do a lot of rewriting when you're doing math. Otherwise you'll lose track. Don't, don't try to avoid the process of writing it out. I see so many students will just try to cram it all in so they don't have to rewrite. Guys, you have to rewrite. So here we go. Oh, no, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Why am I writing that? So now we're going to do the subtractions. Uh, 8 minus 21. 
Well, 21 minus 8, and that is 13. So this would be thir negative 13 twelfths. We're going to square that. And now this would be 3 minus 9. That would be negative 6 eighths. Okay, negative 6 eighths. Divide top and bottom by 2, you get negative 3 fourths. Okay, so this would be negative 3 fourths. And now we're going to square those two things. So let's see here. This is equal to, let's do it this way. This, this is equal to the square root of, and now I'm going to square these fractions. All right, so this would be negative 13 squared over 12 squared, right? Um, and this would, well, let me just explain what, what would be helpful here. It would be helpful to have this in terms of 12. So let me multiply both top and bottom by 3 to give me negative 9 twelfths. Instead of negative 3 fourths, I need negative 9 twelfths. So now plus, okay, so this would be negative 9 squared over 12 squared. Notice that I can now add, because I have common denominators, I can add, uh, I can add these. Uh, so now I'm going to run out of space, but I've got the square root of, you can't combine these bases are different. In the numerator, you've got negative 13 squared. Uh, plus negative 9 squared over 12 squared. And the reason I wrote it that way is because we can now rewrite this square root symbol as the division of two smaller, two less scary looking square roots. So I've got my first square root, which is going to be negative 13 squared minus 9 squared right over the square root of 12 squared okay well the square root of 12 squared is just 12 right so we got to do this math now what is 13 squared that's 13 times 13, 9, 3, 3, 1, 1, 6, 9, okay? So 9 squared is 81. So what I'm looking at here, negative 13 squared is positive. So what I'm looking at here is the square root of 169 minus 81 over square root of 12 squared is just 12 over 12. Let's keep simplifying. So I'm going to bring this down here. So this is going to come over here. I want you to lose track. I'm bringing this whole thing over here. We're going to continue working with it right here. Okay, so what is 169 minus 81? 9 minus 1 is 8, and this is 8, so is it 88, is that right? Yeah, 88. So now I have the square root of 88 over 12. At this point, it's important to factor 88. So I need to take 88 and factor it, and that would be 8 times 11. And that would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 11. All right? A 2 times 2 is 2 squared, so I have 2 squared times 2 times 11. And that's what I need. I need to rewrite this as the square root of 2 squared 
times 2 times 11 over 12. And if you think about it, 12 is just 2 times 2 times 3, because that's 4 times 3. All right, so now I can pull out this 2 squared. This is going to be equal to 2 times the square root of 2 times 11, which is 22, over 2 times 2 times 3. All right, these twos cancel. So now I have my final answer is the square root of 22 over 6. And that's not any of my answer choices. Um, oh dear, what did I do wrong? Should be 88. Know that there's any. Where did I go wrong? Okay, well, I'm going to have to look at that again. Obviously, I didn't do that right. Um, I, I'm actually quite confused here. I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know if I did anything wrong. I want to, before I give up, I want to check. And maybe you see the error. I don't quite see it just yet. Oh, I know. I, I do see it. I do see the error. Ah, okay. Right here is the error. Now, I thought this was going to be scary. All right, so this is, should be plus. And now when I took negative 9 squared, it was positive 81. And like an idiot, I wrote minus 81. So that should have been 169 plus 81. Ugh, 169 plus 81. All right, so let's just go back here and start working from here. 169 plus 81, sorry, that's 10, and then 14, 15, 250. There it is. Okay, now it's going to work. One tiny little mistake, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so that, all that's going to change is it's going to change this right here. Okay, we're just changing these last few steps, so no worries. We only made a tiny error at the end. It's illustrative, though, of how quickly things can go out of whack. Right, so we'll just edit out this. What's going on with my correction tape here? It's not working. Um, okay, so just edit this out. Okay, and this will be edited out. Let's see what we can do here to fix this. Sorry about the error. All right, so we'll go in here, and instead of saying the square root of 88 before, we're going to say the square root of 250. So the square root of 250... And now we have to uh, prime factor 250. So 250 prime factored, well, that's just 25 times 10, which is just 5 times 5, or 5 squared. And 10 is uh, 5 times 2. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm going to go over here and write 5 squared times... 2 times 5 is just 10. So 5 squared times 10. Okay. And now, because I have 5 squared, 
I can pull it out as a 5. Okay, so I can pull that 5 out, and I still have the square root of 10. Okay, and then in the denominator, I have 12. 2 times 2 times 3, 12. Okay, so I can't cancel anything in the numerator and denominator, so I can't reduce the denominator. Okay, so what's going to be the final product here? It'll be 5 times the square root of 10 over 12. All right, so sorry that that problem kind of went sideways on us. Um, it is what it is. My bad. I meant for this to be, it should have been negative 13 squared plus negative 9 squared. We would have never had the problem if we would have maintained uh, proper notation. So that's number 18. Number 19. All right, so given point Q located at negative 7 and point S located at 8, find the location of R if R lies exactly two-fifths the distance from Q to S. So we're going to start at Q and go to S. Let's first plot the points. Here is point Q at negative 7 and point S at positive 8. And we want to find point R. Well, R is going to live r equals negative 7. Okay, so well, we'll write it out in, in letters first. Q plus open parentheses, absolute value, and then difference of Q minus S. Should look more like a Q minus S times 2 fifths. Okay. So now let's substitute in values. Q is negative 7 plus, open parentheses, absolute value, Q minus S. That's negative 7 minus 8. Close the absolute value times 2 fifths. Close parentheses. Okay. So this is equal to negative 7 plus, and then Negative 15, absolute value is positive 15. I've got 15 over 1 times 2 over 5 in parentheses. I can reduce the 15 and 5 to 3 and 1, giving me negative 7 plus 6, which is negative 1. So R is at negative 1. Negative 1, right there. Final problem. Ima oops. Imagine you are driving from Palestine to Madisonville for a regional softball game. If Palestine is located at P9, 13, that would be right here. Okay, so here's P9, 13. Remember, Madisonville is to the south west so we go down on the y and to the left on the x and madisonville is located at negative four comma negative eight that would be negative four comma negative eight right here this would be madisonville at negative four comma negative eight okay if Palestine is located there and Madisonville is located there, what would be your coordinates if you stopped for hamburgers at Texas Burger in Buffalo if that restaurant lies four-sevenths of the distance from Palestine to Madisonville? So here's how we do this. We say, well, we're going to call this Texas Burger. We'll call this point T. Right? So Texas Burger will be point T. T, okay, so we want to find the X component of t. x sub t is going to be equal to our starting position, x sub p, minus the fractional distance. So minus open uh, parentheses, open absolute value, and now I need the absolute difference in the x values. So I'll take um, x sub p 
minus x sub m, close the absolute value, times 4 sevenths. Close parentheses. Okay, let's substitute back in our values. And that would be x sub p is 9 minus, open parentheses, absolute value, 9 minus x sub m is negative 4 minus negative 4. Close absolute value times 4 sevenths. All right, so this is equal to 9 minus, and now 9 minus minus 4 is 9 plus 4, that's 13. So that's 9 minus, open parentheses, 13 over 1 times 4 over 7. Okay, 13 times 4 is 52. So this is equal to 9 minus 52 sevenths, which means that this is equal to, and I need to put 9 in terms of 7, so that would be 63 sevenths, 63 sevenths minus 52 sevenths, and 63 minus 52 is 11, 11 sevenths. Okay, so 11 sevenths, Let's approximate that as a decimal. 11 sevenths as a decimal. We would say, let's do some side work, 11 sevenths. So I need to divide 11 by 7. 7 goes into 11 one time. Okay? Uh, what went wrong here? Make sure I did this right. 7 goes into 11 one time. 1 times 7 is 7. 11 minus 7 is 4. Okay, and then we put a point. And uh, we bring down a 0. 7 goes into 40 um, 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. Okay, and then there's 5 as a remainder. And uh, 7 times 5 is 35. 5 is a remainder. And so we bring down a 0. And then 7 goes into 50 7 times because 7 times 7 is 49. So if I was going to round this, that's approximately equal to 1.6. Okay? And I see I need to uh, correct this test review here. This should say 1.6. All right, so 1.6 is the approximated um, value for that 11 sevenths fraction. So now we'll find the y component, y sub t is equal to y sub p minus open parentheses, open absolute value, and then y sub p minus y sub m close absolute value, multiply by 4 sevenths, right? Close the parentheses, and now we'll substitute in our values. Y sub P was 13 minus, open parentheses, open absolute values, 13 minus, and then Y sub M was negative 8, 13 minus negative 8, close absolute value times 4 sevenths. This is equal to 13 minus, open parentheses, and now 13 plus 8 is 21, 21 over 1 times 4 over 7. All right, so this is equal to 13 minus, I can cancel the 21 and the 7 and leave behind 3 and 1, so 3 times 4 is 12, this is equal to 1. So y sub t is 1. Okay, so this is just, I didn't get these answers changed from the test itself. I changed the numbers. I didn't change the answer choices. So it should be 1.6 comma 1. All right, so let's find those values. 1.6 on the x and 1 would put me about right here. Here somewhere. All right? So this should be point T at 1.6, comma, 1. And 
Good. They line up. All right, so here is Texas Burger, right here. Texas Burger. And this is a throwback to uh, going to see the uh, softball kids play at their regional tournament uh, last year. Um, really fun game. Hope they, uh, I know them, they will make it again. Okay, so that was the review. Um, I've got a few things I need to fix. And I uh, apologize about the calculation error here on this huge square root problem. Um, but those will happen. Uh, but we did go through the whole review here in one hour. So we are just at an hour. And uh, that's about the amount of time that you should spend uh, probably times three. All right, so this take you about three hours to do this. Um, I went through it super fast. Uh, but give yourself time. Give yourself about three hours to go through this cumulative exam review. Um, the test questions will be uh, identical in form but different in number. So that is the end of this review video. Give it a like if this was helpful. Um, give it a, a thumbs up if you would. Uh, leave a comment in the description uh, or leave a comment in the comment section and make sure to subscribe to the channel so you are always alerted to new videos on this channel. Thank you.